Greetings on this wonderful day. It's beautiful to see your great face, radiant, and to be with everyone on the day of yoga. Yoga is a science of wholeness that establishes fullness of life. And it is my great joy to be with all the distinguished and honorable excellencies and guests and leaders in different fields and to share some thoughts about this system that is often thought as a personal, individual, and even physical aspect of self-development in the context of various problems and issues that can emerge socially, individually, and even on the level of national life and international life. And the key aspect in this value that yoga offers is really knowledge and knowledge of oneself, experiencing higher states of consciousness, and therefore using one's full potential to have a life on the individual level and social level that is most fulfilling for the individual and for society. We have seen that this pandemic that we are facing is a global aspect of disease that spread out, that requires not only treatment of individuals, but also behavioral adjustment, national and international cooperation, right decision-making, uh, working with scientists to discover palliative, preventative, and curative measures. And therefore, in the yoga system, we have all of these values integrated. And we should remember yoga in its essence is, of course, unity, but not only unity of mind and body for the individual, but also unity on the level of society, unity on the level of nations, unity on the level of individual and environment. And therefore, it is something that addresses all of these values. And it addresses all these values on the level of consciousness, on the level of awareness. The yoga system belongs to what is often called the six systems of Indian philosophy, which are six branches of the Veda, Veda meaning knowledge, and that's Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sankhya, Karma, Mimansa, Yoga, Karma, Mimansa, and then Vedanta. And Vedanta is the ultimate aspect of yoga. It is the end of Veda, but in the sense of completion and completeness of knowledge. Veda is knowledge. And yoga leads to that unbounded knowledge that the reality of life is consciousness. And it's from consciousness that emerge the physical aspects of existence. It's not the other way around. Modern trends of science, they try to think that it's the material value, the physical, that leads to the mental, that leads to consciousness and awareness. So matter gets organized in a certain way, and then it creates a nervous system, and then the nervous system is able to be conscious. In the Vedic tradition, in the Vedantic tradition, and the true yoga tradition, it's the other way around. It is actually a field of being, which is consciousness, that then manifests itself in very specific ways as matter. And modern physics has discovered that indeed the aspects of reality that we see on the surface, which are objects made out of molecules, molecules are made out of atoms, atoms made out of elementary particles, Elementary particles are made out of fields of energy and that these fields of energy are gradually unified through quantum layers from quantum mechanics to quantum field theories to unified field theories that show there is one field, unbounded field of being that actually manifests as these fields of energy, particles, grouping together, becoming atoms and molecules, and then objects. So that rejoins the Vedic understanding of one field of unity, that's the Vedanta value, and that field is a field of consciousness, a field of awareness. And 
Tapping into that field, one taps into the field of infinite unity, which is the true value of yoga that connects everything with everything, that connects the mind with the body, mind and body with the environment, environment with the universe, and creates a wholeness on that level. There are techniques of yoga, such as transcendental meditation, which is the supreme level of yoga that allows the mind to experience that value. And hundreds, thousands of scientific research studies have shown the effect of that in integrating mind and body, improving the immune system, reducing inflammation, so balancing the physiology. And what we have seen in this COVID uh, problem that the world has faced and is still facing is that there is the attack from a virus, which is an environmental factor, and that attack has to be acted against by the body, so the immune system has to be strong, but the immune system has to be balanced also and not overreact, because the overreaction creates inflammation, and most of the lethalities and problems that have happened are due to this overreaction of the body against the virus and creating this terrible inflammation with cytokine storms and whatever the technical values of what happens that overwhelms the physiology because the body is attacking itself. And what this means is there is lack of integration between mind, body, immune system, and the reactions to this aspect of the disease. So we have seen and we know today that the mind is connected to the nervous system. What happens in our mind is reflected in our nervous system. What happens in our nervous system is reflected in the hormones and the way they are secreted. What happens in the hormones and the way they are secreted influences the immune system and the inflammatory response of the body. That's why we have what we call psycho on the mind level neuro on the nervous level, endocrino on the endocrine hormonal level, immunology on the immune level. There is an axis like that that connects mind, nervous system, hormones, and then the actual response on the immune system and the inflammation in the body. Yoga addresses all these values. It addresses all these values by balancing the physiology Balancing mind, body integration and immune system integration and brings that calmness, that peace that is alert. This is what has been also shown in transcendental meditation. People who practice this technique of yoga are able to fight disease. They have younger biological system, which means the ability to fight the problems and the ability of the immune cells to be balanced and have enough lymphocytes, like T lymphocytes, for example, that we have seen that with age, they reduce, and that's why aging and problems with the aging body have an effect on the ability of the system to be balanced and to react properly under such kind of stress and strain. We have seen that there is rejuvenation, which means the body is chronologically of whatever age, but biologically much younger by practicing these techniques of yoga, transcendental meditation in particular is the one that has been researched on this level. And therefore, there is a profound aspect of yoga in this level of direct fighting of the disease and the ability to maintain balance and reduce inflammation. But that's not enough. It also shows balance in behavior because the ability to be restful, to be quiet, to understand and process information and make decisions depend on one's awareness, one's consciousness, one's level of settled mind. Under conditions of stress, we have seen in societies that many governments, many people have reacted with very good will, very great uh, desire to do things all wholeheartedly, yet under stress and strain and fear, decisions can be made that are not most conducive to the best outcome in such situations. 
So what we need is balanced mind and not acting from the level of fear and anxiety. And that's what yoga also offers. So it brings to the individual the settled intelligence which connects with the inner self, with the inner creativity, which that unified field which is within us that allows us to act and think and make decisions in tune with the laws of nature, in tune with what is most conducive for best results in society, best results in behavior, be it distancing, accepting the rules, being disciplined, understanding why this is so, and acting from a settled, quiet, calm perspective. Not being anxious and stressed and exploding into uh, you know, stressful things and coming out in a way that is chaotic and therefore leading to issues and problems on the individual level and on the international level. Also, this calmness, this kind of peace inside this inner awakening is not only individual, it's also on the collective level because we are part of the collective reality. That's what Vedanta expresses, that one field of being is the same everywhere. And by awakening it within ourselves, we are awakening it in the collective consciousness of society. And therefore, we are bringing the light of life, the light of wisdom, the light of intelligence, the light of creativity to the common value of society. And that helps the scientists, that helps the thinkers, that help the leaders, the political leaders to think more clearly to discover what is needing to be done and therefore allow action to be in tune with the best steps of realization and achievement to protect society and create the actual treatments and the interactions that are needed for the best outcome on all these levels. That is why yoga is this unifying value, mind, body, collectivity of individuals, which means societies and nations, and ultimately collectivity of the world, global collectivity, that is unity also. Unity on that level, ability to act from that level of knowledge, which is based in awareness. If one is dull, then the knowledge is tainted, is not complete. One does not make the right decisions. If the room is dark, you cannot see the solutions. If the room is light, lit, and clear, then you find the objects that are in the room. Otherwise, you are lost fighting with darkness. Yoga brings the light of life for the individual and for society and makes the decision-making process, makes the finding of solutions more clear, more easy, and therefore creates all of these values. Of course, there are all the other values that come from the whole system in Veda, which includes Ayurveda and all other aspects that deal directly with certain herbs, certain plants, certain postures or physical postures to relieve the stress from the body, to prevent uh, disease, to strengthen the immune system also. But I always like to highlight that value of consciousness, which is ultimately the true reality that allows us to make right decisions to go out in life and find the solutions in the most effective way. And yoga is such a fundamental aspect of life, such a fundamental aspect of what makes us make decisions. Because even on the physical level, we do things on the physical level, but who is the doer? The doer is the mind that decides, I want this, I want to try this. It's the intelligence that makes you try this rather than this, make those steps in life that allow you to progress rather than regress. And where, where is this mind functioning? It's functioning on the level of your awareness, of your consciousness. And that is what even on the physical level is the motor of action, is the motor of decision making. And that is yoga. Yoga, therefore, is not just some nice additional thing that we can use as palliative and all of that. It is essential. It is the first thing to address, and the other things come onto you 
in a way that is more and more clear. You seek the fullness within, the heavenly life within, the clarity within, and then all else is automatically taken and decided and, and grows, be it in diet, be it in daily routine, be it in choice of uh, food and habits and herbs and plants and medicines and vaccination and all of that, they come once one is clear in the mind and the body. And therefore, this is the contribution which is very profound in yoga, in transcending, in transcendental meditation, going beyond, going to the source, watering the root of the tree so that the fruits and the flowers are healthy, not just trying to do it on the surface level by cleaning things if they are on the surface uh, disrupted, then go to the roots, water the root so that the tree is healthy. And when the tree is healthy, it brings the best fruit, best fruits for life to be lived in fullness and wholeness. And I feel great gratitude for all organizers, Amarjit Bharmaji and all the other organizers. And of course, India, the land of the Veda and Sri Modi ji and all the parliament and all those in India, different parties that are also present and supportive of this system to give to the world health and wholeness and fullness and fulfillment. Thank you for inviting me to participate again in this wonderful day of unity, of yoga, to create a life on earth which can really be lived on a heavenly level.